to give you all the glory. We celebrate your goodness. We we'll praise you for who you are. We are thankful for what you have done. We worship you in the beauty of your holiness. We give you praise because there is no God like our God. We we'll thank you because there is no king like our king. Father, we want to thank you for preserving our life from January up till now. We we'll thank you for good health. We we'll thank you for a life-giving church called Harvesters. We thank you for a platform to pray called Next Level. Thank you for those that were looking for children that are now pregnant. Thank you for those that were pregnant that now have their babies. Thank you for those that were believing to get engaged that are now engaged. Thank you for those that were engaged that are now married. Thank you, Lord, for those that got contracts. Thank you for those that got provision. Thank you for those that thank you for those that got promotion. Thank you for those that got approval. Blessed be your holy name, oh God. We rejoice because our God is good. We rejoice because our God is kind. We rejoice because our God is faithful. Who is our God? He's the greatest of the greatest. He's the mightiest of the mightiest. He's the biggest of the biggest. There's no one like Jehovah. There's no one like Jesus. We bless your holy name. You've healed the sick bodies. You have healed cancer. You've broken depression. You have canceled self-doubt. You've given us confidence. You've given us a, a health of some esteem. We are grateful. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 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 All the contractors, all the builders, they are getting contract upon contract. People are getting approvals upon approval. Funding is coming in. Payment is coming in. Hallelujah. Grandmothers are seeing their grandchildren. Father, we bless your holy name. We thank you for giving us answer prayers. We are grateful, oh God. We are grateful. Thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for grace and mercy. Thank you, oh God, for the forgiveness of sin and for the gift of righteousness. Thank you for NLP, brother. Thank you for Sunday service in London. Thank you for the fasting and praying tomorrow. We are grateful, oh God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Say grace. Say grace. Say grace. Say this is my story. Say grace. Say grace. Say grace. Say this is my story. Shout amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at me everyone. Always remember to say thank you. Some, some people just got bored. He's thanking me for this. Someone says, Father, thank you. I don't know how to thank God that way. I want to be specific. Lord, I'm thankful for everyone that was depressed that got in here. And they were depressed, but now their life has radically changed. I'm thankful for every testimony on NLP. I'm thankful for those that got... Do you know how many people have reached me that they got engaged this year? I'm grateful. You know why I'm grateful? I normally remind myself one thing. If God refused to answer prayer, what will I do? Nothing. That God chooses to be faithful to himself. And the beautiful thing is this. As I'm grateful for what he has done, then he begins to perfect the rest. You know, just yesterday, um, there's this brother in church and he's also a friend of mine. And Wally will be somewhere here. Wally wrote me and said, he wrote me, just wrote me about thanking me for the impact. And I said, Wally, I can't even believe how the Lord has changed your life. And he told me, even me, I can't believe myself that I go to church regularly right now and I have a deep relationship with God. And you know the amazing thing? Only a stupid man will say this is it. This is a work of God. Let me tell you, the most blessed people will tell you that God helped them. It's people that are not blessed that feel arrogant. 
God has helped us. Do you, when you come to church every Sunday, people from different race, colors, sharing the goodness of the Lord. We are the people the Lord has helped. Let me tell you, when people boast about their pastor, be like, well, I'm not sure my pastor will be proud of that. Because my pastor is aware that it's grace. It's grace. It's grace. This is our story. Yeah. And the beautiful thing that God has not started with us yet. The best is yet to come. Praise the Lord. Please, you can have your seat. Please, you can have your seat. Amen. In all the services we've been having today, marks the end of our random act of kindness. How many of you have been able to practice random act of kindness? Raise your hands. That is really beautiful. You should see the, 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 all our pastors, of our leaders going out of their way, being a blessing to people in restaurants. I have some videos online. It was really beautiful just to be able to do that. You know, you know. So today we have some people. Please don't put your bags under the seat. Uncle think is a is a gift. You know, praise the Lord. So today under the seat, there are gifts under the seat right there. Go ahead and check on it. If you just pick why they're checking, we have wow. Someone has a gift over there. Let me see what that gift is. Look at that. Look at that. Someone has a gift. It's a pair of shoes. Praise God. And guess what? Those online, we're also, those watching, those online, we sent a link to join on Zoom because we're sending out gifts today. Hallelujah. You know, it, it was Brother Ty, Pastor, Pastor, let, let me bring the gift again. You know, Pastor Ty, Ty was Patewa's birthday, you know, and um, I was able to bless him with this today. I'm not sure if you will like it though. But I think this is nice. Do you wear things? Are you not too spiritual for things like this? Yeah, you're not. The Holy Spirit will allow you to wear this one. Oh, wow. Praise the Lord. Well, we have more gifts for people. Who should we start with, ladies or guys? Can I have the ladies' gifts first? <laughs> Mrs. John, how do we give this out today? What is this one? Is a pair of shoes. What size? Size nine. Thirty nine. Thirty nine. Where's the guy? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, bring, bring. The guy. God is good and kind to me. God is good and kind to me. Another one. Yeah. This one says, you've got the mail. Pastor John, you have to walk into the spirits. Pastor Yale, take this one. Go into the spirit and give someone. Someone that you do not know. Yeah. Pastor Femi George, you go with this one. Someone that you do not know. Online. No, no, no. People are getting online. Wait, we have started online now. As in, go, go, yeah. Pastor John. Make sure you go into the middle, into the middle, don't. Mrs. John, this way, go this way. 
Mrs. Gregory, this way. Exactly. Have you seen this? This is hair. Hair. Something good is about to happen. Something better is in store. We are together again. Together. What is going on? This is for men. For men. You know what? I'm going to keep this too. For the person that gives me the first, best comment today when I'm asking for feedback. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of people like to share today. I'm sure a lot of people will share. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Someone says, why are you doing this? Please remember, it's more blessed to give than to receive. You know, sometimes it's okay to say, I want to get, I want to get, I'm getting. But the person that gives, the hands that give is always on top. The one that receives is happy at the moment. The one that gives perpetually on top and the reason I'm saying so is that as much as you want to get today there are people around your life that you can be a blessing to who can you send airtime to today when last did you send a gift to your mom to your dad to someone that is struggling in your family today we all of you must go back and watch Pastor Jeff's teaching in the first second and third service very powerful and powerful and you know what the basic concept is this Oh, look at that. Look at that. With the baby, just at the right, at the back of the hall. At the back of the hall. She deserves it. She deserves it. She deserves it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. She deserves it. Glory. Are we ready for the we've got today? All right. So, remember, whoever gives the best comment, just send them the gift. So, we have one for male and one for what? Female. Hallelujah. So, you guys want hair? Why? Why do you want the hair? Come here. Come and pick what she's showing me. Come and pick. Give her the microphone Why she wants the hair. Give her the microphone. Uh, yeah. Why do you want the hair? I just said I don't have a hair on. This is like a This is all you have right now. So, yes, you, sir. you need something to cover it. Yes, sir. So, Praise God. Hallelujah. That's great. That's a good place to start from. So when I ask my question, make sure you're giving the best answer okay, so that you can get the hair. All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Please note something. Now, this is very important. From tomorrow, we're fasting. May the 1st, the 2nd, and the 3rd. It's our monthly fasting and prayer. And um, I really believe that this fasting is very significant. I know you will join the flowers on your seat, but this is what I want to do. Get two or three people to join. <clears throat> Praise God. What do you do now? Yeah. Give him a microphone. Because I want to share your story. I want to share it here. Give him the microphone. And I'm going to look for a video, the video I did with you two years ago. Give him a microphone. What do you do now? Yeah. Um, I, I know at some point you worked with, um, with the Bali's. Yeah. 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 I'm working with Mrs. Chinelo Bali now. Oh, you're still working with Chino Lobali, okay. Yeah, and I own a business too. I own a boutique business. You run what? Yeah, I own a, a unisex boutique business. You have a u boutique business now? Yes. You yes. have a store or it's online? Like I have a sh yeah, shop. You have a shop now? Yeah, yeah. When did that mean to you? Two, two or three years ago? Um, 2020, during COVID. Now. During COVID? Yeah. What were you doing when I met you? Um, I was in the streets. He was taking his bat on the road. Yeah. He was living on the streets. Taking his bat on the road, and the road is Admiralty, just after Admiralty. And um, 
I began to come every week, every every other week, every month. Yeah. And yeah. I will bring food. Yeah, food and some morning clothes, clothings, you know, and all of that. Yeah, yeah. And they chased you out of where you people because they were sitting on the yeah, road. Where we are staying because they don't trust anybody around there. Around there. Yeah. So they chased them out and they moved to another side of the road. Yeah. Then some of the, some of them, there were about nine of you that time. So what yeah. I did was that I got them, I began to put them with people to work, you know, and I told them that, you know, if you steal or do something, that's the end because I don't know you from anywhere, you know. But, I, I mean, that morning, I was broken. I was just walking down and I saw four boys, four old guys, down, breaking their backs, stuck naked, shameless on the road. I'm like, what is this? And they were like, we moved from Port Harcourt. We have nobody. They said, Lagos is good. We came here, saw, saw the streets. We sleep on the street. So right on the road, there's a place they take their baths. There's a place they cook. There's a place they sleep. And they have this mosquito net. They just pull it there and they sleep. I said, when it rains, they say they hide under the tree when it rains for it to protect them. But look at, you know what I'm saying? So, But look at him today. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. And let me, let me tell you something. I never invited them to church. Neither did I ever tell them I was a pastor. Yes or no? Well, you didn't invite us. I never did. I never told them I was a pastor. I never invited them to church. Because either we're human beings. Always remember that. Either they're Muslims or they're Buddhists. Everybody has a need. So my, my goal to help them was not a way to get them to come to church. It was to help them. I don't know. How did you find out I was a pastor? And a, how did they find out eventually? Or church? Um, yeah, it was after the lockdown. Um, because I used to go to this church since 2019. Yeah. I was not a fully member then. Yeah. But I never knew you were a pastor then too. So it was after the lockdown. Someone said that we should be going to NLP. Yeah. And from there, we saw you on the pulpit preaching. And, and you were surprised, right? Yeah, I was very surprised. Even me and my friends too, we were surprised. Praise the Lord. And he's not the only one. You know, the, the other one with the girlfriend, what's his name now? They say he stays very far. Yeah, that is um, Joshua. Joshua. Yeah. Because I don't know their names like that. I know them by face. I don't know. Some of them are still not able to transit to get a job yet. But, I mean, this is a good story. And thank you. Because, yeah, this is a good story. So the first thing is that he had to work with the Kubak Limited. And sometimes they moved him to... You know, they moved, they moved, they moved, and it's there. Just remember, let me tell you something. When you have your worst days, remember that the options that make your days terrible is someone's prayer point. Always remember that. You know, what you complain about, someone is praying to have those kind of options. You know, you know what worries you? <sighs> My God, I didn't even... What do you call it? I don't even know what shoe, I don't even know what shoe to wear. Because <laughs> if I wear this, does it, go with this? does it should go with this? You don't have matching shoe. Some people don't have dress they don't have. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we must keep doing good. Let's keep, let's keep going. I'm only saying this because, not because it's here. I mean, lots of people will help. You will never know because there's the, the goal is not to advertise it. You will, just because I saw him in front and I've not seen him in a long time, although he comes to church and I just thought, oh, that's true. How are you? You know, that kind of thing. I mean, just like I asked after our sister, I've not seen her in church also for a while. Praise the Lord. And that's why you must belong to a family because sometimes, let me tell you the mistake most of you make online and offline. You want people to help you, but you have not built relationship before you ask for help. Nah, it doesn't work that way. A lot of you slide into my DM and say, can you please bless me? I don't even know if you're a rogue. Some people don't even follow me and they send me a DM to send them money. It doesn't work that way. I want to help. I'm, I'm not a waster. Neither do I want to be defrauded. Build relationships. And not just with me. Go to a cell. Go somewhere. Build relationships. Build relationships. All right. Let's turn our Bibles to First Samuel. Um, maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13, verse 32. And this is the last teaching about self-doubt. We could not get to the self-esteem issue. But the good thing is that next month, we will be talking about overcoming depression, which is a big thing. Depression is becoming the second leading cause of a lot of health problems. 85% of all sicknesses are caused by stress. You know, 85% of all sicknesses, medically speaking, are caused by stress. So we just want to begin to speak into that. Why am I telling you this? Every one of you have a friend.
that is going through depression, a family friend, a wife, a husband, a sister, boyfriend, girlfriend, this would be a good time to invite them to church and allow the power of God to touch them in a significant way. Allow the power. Some people are depressed over their health, over their size. Next month, the month of May, listen to me. I want us to be, go wild with this teaching. Go wild. Let's go wild. Overcoming depression. Put it on your status. Put it everywhere. I'm not sure if you saw the video earlier. Did you see the video earlier? Um, did you put on the video earlier on depression? Okay, they didn't. Okay, there was a video earlier. I, I didn't know why they didn't put up the video earlier. But we will maybe put up the video at some point and put it there. Praise the Lord. Thank you. No, it's too late for that now. Thanks. You know, thank you. Thank you. Because I, I thought they would have put up the video earlier to help us talk about it. All right. Numbers chapter 13 verse 32. So in this teaching, I'm going to rush it. I'm going to teach a lot for the first maybe 20 minutes. Then I would come to the conversations and we can help some people. Because I want us to be able to take some things away. Sometimes because of the interruptions, I'm not able, able to hit my point. So, Numbers chapter 13, verse 32. So, why should you conquer self-doubt? Numbers chapter 13, verse 32. Numbers 13, verse 32. So, the Bible says this. Numbers 13, verse 32. So, the Bible says this. Oh, maybe let's read from verse 30. And Caleb still the people before Moses and said, let us go at once and possess it for we are able to overcome it. Now, this is Caleb's perspective of the situation. What was his perspective? That we're able to overcome it. He says, but the men that went with him said, we be not able to go up. That's self-doubt. That's what I'm talking about. What is their self-doubt? Self-doubt are those thoughts you have that tells you you can't. So, What's the difference between self-doubt and stupidity? Stupidity is when you know something is impossible. For example, can you run from here to Aja in 10 minutes? That is practically impossible if you are not a runner. And if you're a runner, that's a top call. So, but self-doubt is this. There's something you can do, but the thought comes and tells you, it's a negative thought that tells you you can't. You're not enough. You will fail at this. Those are the thoughts. So in this situation, it says, but the men that went up with him said, why is this self-doubt? Because two categories of people went. Caleb saw the same thing and Caleb said, hey, we can do this. But when the other people responded, they responded through their self-doubt. What did they say? The Bible says, and the men that went up with Caleb said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up what, guess what? Self-doubt brings up what? An evil report. How do you know people have self-doubt? They begin to speak negative. You will hear it in their conversation. You know, when you hear people say, I've tried everything. Just notice, negativity and self-doubt has entered inside. Because really, there's no human being that's tried everything. And I've told you before, when someone says you've tried everything, what should you do? Give them a paper and a pen and say, write 12 things you've tried for me. I guess most of the time, people cannot write beyond 6 or 7. Self-doubt. So the Bible says this. Well, well, this is very powerful. The Bible says this. It says that, um, where are we now? It says, and they brought up an evil report. For they searched the land for which they searched. Unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through we've gone to search is a land. Guess what now? This was self doubt. Dot. Self doubt magnifies the difficulty. He said, It's a land that eats it up what? Question What land eats up inhabitants? Self doubt gives you a negative generalization. generalization. So you hear someone say that, Oh, pieces don't do well in Nigeria. That's not true. Nobody will help you except they want to sleep with you. That's not true. So, see what the Bible says. The Bible says, it said, and they search through. The land which we've gone through is the land that eats up the inhabitants. And all the people we saw there are the men of great stature. See, this is the last thing self-doubt. So, the first thing, when you have self-doubt, you become negative in your talking. 
The number two, when you have self-doubt, you magnify the problems. The number three, when you have self-doubt, see what happens. You change your identity to become the identity of the victim. You begin to have an identity of what? A victim. And you know the thing about having an identity of a victim? You will rise to the standard of your identity. You will always gravitate towards who you are. So what, see what I said. And when we saw the giant, the sons of Anak, and, the, and which were come of the giant, we were in our own sight. Guess what? What were we? As what? No, come on. Don't read that way. We were in our own sight as what? And what happened? And so were we in their sight. See, what you call yourself is what you become to them. So, if you have self-doubt that no one will ever love you, guess what? Because you've said, I'm unlovable. In our own sight, we saw ourselves as unlovable. And so, we became unlovable to them. Self-doubt. So, why is it important to overcome self-doubt? Number one, it will paralyze, it will paralyze your potentials. A lot of people do not demonstrate their potentials. They don't. Because self-doubt makes them paralyzed. There's a lot you can do. For example, do you know that, you know, you know about the grace of God? You know, I want to say something, but I hope that you don't turn into politics. The emergence of Peter of Labour Party is a miracle to me. I never saw it coming two or three years ago. I don't know if you ever saw it coming. But something was that there's a way this man believed in himself and passed that passion. Someone says, am I for Peter Obi? I have not said I'm for anyone. I'm just saying a lesson from what? A politician. As a pastor, I try not to be partisan. So, you know, someone says, but you have somebody that come to church. Anybody that comes to the house of God is welcome. Including Satan. He came today. You didn't know he came today? Bible says, anywhere the sons of God are gathered, Satan also comes. The only thing he has not introduced himself to you. That's why. Glory to God. So, so for me, it, 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 it's just a lot of boldness. A lot of you, so a lot of you, let me tell you, what you do in life is not what you can, it's what you believe you can. Because ultimately, what you do is what you believe you can, not what you can. So a lot of you can do this, can do that. How many of you know that you have strong leadership gift inside you? Yes or no? What have you done with it? Some of you have done nothing with it. Because self-doubt has what? Has paralyzed you. So, this is, your first, this is your first question. Write it somewhere. In what area has my potential been paralyzed because of self-doubt? In what area has my potential been paralyzed because of self-doubt? What potential? What potential has been paralyzed because of self-doubt? Let me give you my personal story. You know, for a long time I was trying to write a book. And the thought says, who will read your book? You don't have to write the book. I'm not even a good author. I'm even good in English. Who will read your book? And, and you know, for years, I never got my book written. And you know what? I eventually got written, written about two years ago, two or three years ago. And I left the book in my email for three years. And I just couldn't print it. Why? Because I was paralyzed by self-doubt. And self-doubt comes every time. How many of you here, you, you can be a cell leader, but self-doubt has held you back. That, eh, you can be a cell leader. So you think you can be a cell leader. You will, crumb, you will fall tomorrow. You know, and your mind is there. The problem with self-doubt is this. Once you believe self-doubt, it will not become a self-fulfilling prophecy. What's self-fulfilling prophecy? I want to define it for you. The law of self-fulfilling prophecy says, whatever you believe will ultimately happen to you. So, the Bible says this. It says, yeah, the camera guys, I would prefer if I have a three quarter shot, like I normally would say to you. Yes, and leave the scripture on. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, back to scripture. So, the Bible says this. The Bible says this. We were in our own sight as what? Grasshoppers. Look at the law of self fulfilling prophecy. When we saw ourselves as grasshoppers, what happens? And so were we in their sight. Exactly the way you see yourself. 
is how life will see you. Let me give a story. One of our church members, his father is close to one of the richest Nigerians. I'm not sure if it's Micah Denug- I think it's Micah Denuga. I, I think so. So he to- they told me that what their dad was a senior in, the, in secondary school. And they said, you know, they said that when they were in secondary school, that Micah Denuga would, he was a junior. But he always used to wear white. I used to tell all of them that they all will work for him. There was this amount, and all of them thought it was crazy, it was stupid. But eventually, when it became great, what all of them kept on saying that, but he always said this, but he always said this, the more confident you are about the future, the more it favors you. So what area are you struggling with self-doubt? That's the question. What area is self-doubt holding you back? What should you be doing if you're not doubting yourself right now? What will you have done? What will you be doing in your finance, in your business, in ministry, in your Christian life, in your relationship, if you don't doubt yourself? Let me get some conversations, boy. Let me get two conversations, just two or three. What will you be doing? Give it to Sister Toba. Yeah, give it to her. You're next to her. What will you be doing if you're not doubting yourself right now? Okay. Yeah, it's on. It's on. I can hear you. I guess I would have expanded on my platform much more than what it is at the moment. So You'll have expanded your platform much more than this. Yeah. So what, every time you want to expand that platform, what holds you back? What thought comes to your mind? The thought that am I ready to actually increase it the way I want? I know that it's supposed to be bigger than this. But yeah. The thought of I'm not ready for this yet. Is it that you're not ready or you don't, you're not enough for it? I know I'm enough. You're enough. Yes. But it's just that you're like, there's no capacity for this right now. I know. So I'm supposed to build relationships to, yeah. to do that. Yeah. So I just like. You prevent, pull back. Yes, pull so back. So why, why do you pull back? I, so I think maybe fear. Fear. Fear may be part of it. Yes. Yeah. Be- because it's all hides in your self doubt. Okay, thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Who else wants to share your self doubt story? Anybody here? Yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. There's someone here. Yeah. Yeah, go, go ahead, lady. You know, one pastor told me, he said that I love the way you get people to speak in church, but I can't do it because if someone asks me a question I don't know, I say, self-doubt. I feel like, I feel like I'm supposed to be... Yes, tell me. I feel like I'm supposed to be hosting shows, changing people's lives. You, you believe you should be hosting shows? Yeah. I think so also. I, I think. <laughs> so why are you not doing it right now? What, what doubts? The, I might not really get the audience that I'm looking for. I want to ask you something. What about if you do? I don't know. What about if you do? Because, did you notice something? Self-doubt always tells you focus on the negative. You might not get the audience you want. The question is, what about if you get the audience you want? And the more you focus on the negative, the more negative you become. The more you focus on the positive, the more positive you become. The more you focus on the negative, the more tired you become before starting. Praise God. Okay, who wants to share another self-doubt story with me? Yes, she, she wants to share another self-doubt story with me. Is it, there's someone over there also? Give, give her the microphone, any, any of the two of them that wants to share the self-doubt story. Ho, hold on, there's someone, the lady, yes, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. I feel like um, I should have gone farther in my um, my makeup line because I have a makeup line. I should have done so much more, but so much doubt comes upon me sometimes. Like, oh, you just move back. Like, will the Nigerian market like your stuff? Will they understand the pricing? And um, I keep taking my time and procrastinating. Sometimes I will have the money and then I'll spend it. So the self-doubt is that you don't... Your so the self-doubt is that will Nigerians... The market I'm in now, because I was in a different market, will they like my product? Will they think it's too expensive? Will they... Um, That's come? what they are thinking. What are you doubting? You are doubting it will accept you. Yes, and that's literally what I've actually struggled with all my life is acceptance from others. 
Did you see that? So sometimes what you experience as business is carried over from background. I want to ask you a question. So if you try and they accept you, what happens? Then I'll be happy and I'm walking in my purpose. So why don't you try? I want to see something. So are you happy on a scale of 1 to 10 concerning your purpose? 10 is I'm very happy about my purpose. Where are you right now? 5. 5. What will you do to move from 5 to 8? I need to push. You, you know, need to push. I need to push spiritually, you know, because my purpose is not just tied to being an, a beauty entrepreneur. My purpose is also tied to many things that God has showed me. So I need to push in so many areas, but sometimes I feel like overwhelmed because I have so many gifts. I have so many things that God has put on no, me. The, you know why you feel overwhelmed? They feel overwhelmed because there are a lot of things you've not done. So it's not becoming overwhelming for you because all the dreams are not becoming weights on your behalf. On your shoulders. That's why you feel overwhelmed because I need to do this. You didn't do this. You need to do this. All of them are becoming weights gradually. And at the, you know the thing? At the end of it, you don't feel happy, do you? On your birthdays, how do you feel when you think about your life? Hmm. On one side, you're grateful. Then when you think about your dreams, how do you feel? You know, I the last birthday I had, I did not feel enough. I felt like you know, like, you've wasted so much time. Like, wow. Why? You know, but I don't know if I'm just so hard on myself or what it is because, I mean, people around me always tell me, oh, you're doing fantastic. You're amazing. You're, you're this, you're that. But I, it's like that inner voice. I'm always just like, yo, why haven't you done more than you're, you're supposed to be way farther than this? You, you wasted time. You, That's you know, what I, feel. I really believe that the voice is challenging you. Let me tell you something. People can tell you you're doing very fine, but nobody has your gauge than you on the inside. Human beings cannot gauge your gauge because if they say you're doing fine today, they can say you're doing bad tomorrow. But nobody has your gauge than you on the inside. I think, I think, I think that you have to confront your self-doubt. So I wanted to see something. Did you see how unhappy she sounds and how unfulfilled she sounds? Because one of the things the self-doubt will do is that you will not be able to achieve your dreams. Literally, you will not be able to achieve your dreams. And because you're not able to achieve your dreams, you'll be unfulfilled. Do you know there are people that are my friends and they said, we're still trying to start the church 20 years after? Glory to God. All right, all right. Yes, there's a, there's a lady here. Just the last person, yeah. yeah okay. Okay, first I want to talk, it's actually career-wise. So a couple of months ago, I got a job as a group HR. Would you hold the back for you? Okay, so I got a job a couple of months ago, a managerial role, as a group HR to a couple of companies. And trust me, from the day I got that letter, I had doubted if I could do this job. So I kept saying... <laughs> I can't hear you very well. You sound very blurry. I'm not sure if it's you or the microphone. Please continue. Okay, but did you get me, sir? Continue, sir. Continue, ma'am. Okay, so ever since I got the job, I actually really doubted if I could do it. Because it's a managerial role, and it is it's supposed to really expand my capacity. So I really doubted myself. I spoke to people. People were like, I could do it, I could do it. But I allowed an, an anxiety really got the best part of me. And trust me, since that day, a couple of months down the line, I've been struggling with the job. You're struggling with the job? Yes. Oh, hold on. You know what I'm saying about self-doubt? Because the moment you start doubting yourself, it's a lot of what? Self-fulfilling what? Prophecy. If you're saying, I will not do well, I will not do well, what will happen again? You eventually will not do well. And when you don't know, you, do well, you say, I knew I will not do well. You will not realize that you made it happen to yourself. Glory to God. Okay, so let's keep going now. Why conquer self-doubt? It paralyzes your initiative. It will paralyze your growth. Let me tell you what self-doubt does. Ebola could be. The moment you think you will not do well, what happens? You don't even give your best to it. Have you noticed that? That's it. And that's why you eventually don't do well. Because you don't believe in yourself enough. So they say, be a cell leader. Start a business. But you already think you will not do well. So what happens? You just put in enough to show you have put in effort. 
But you don't put in enough effort to show that you want to succeed. Eventually you fail and you say, that's the reason why I failed. But the reason why you failed was that you didn't trust yourself to put in every single thing inside. How many of you have had self-doubt about your relationship before? Did you put everything inside? Did you put everything inside? No. Because the more you doubt yourself, the more you don't put everything inside. So you yourself, you begin to break yourself down because you're not putting everything inside. So for, let, me, let me even slide a little. A lot of you are called to leadership in church. And you'll be like, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. Someone encourages you. You eventually do it, but you don't put everything inside. And until you put it, listen to me. It's until you put everything inside that it works. This is what Paul told Timothy. He said, give thyself wholly to these things. He said, give yourself wholly. Like give your entire being to it and your profiting shall appear to all. Until you give yourself wholly to it, your profiting cannot appear to all. Glory to God. So self that is going to paralyze your potentials. It's going to limit your growth. Then the third thing is that it's going to make you negative. And the fourth thing is that you're going to have unrealized dreams that will lead to unfulfillment. So how can I overcome self-doubt? Which is why I want to spend all the time today. Philippians chapter 2 verse 13. How can I overcome self-doubt? And for some of you, you've overcome self-doubt. We want to learn from you. And for some of you, you're on the journey. We want to learn from you also. How can I overcome self-doubt? See, Philippians chapter 2 verse 13. Can you put it on the screen? Philippians chapter 2 verse 13. Philippians chapter 2 verse 13. This is very powerful. Somebody say Amen. That's weak. Someone say amen. amen. That's weak. Somebody say amen. amen. Let's just together. I want to go. For what? One of the things, let me tell you one of the things I'm learning right now. Was God put a dream in me? The reason why I don't self-doubt is this. Because it is God at work in me. Both to will and to do of his good. That desire... To start a business, it's God at work in me. That desire to buy a property, it's God at work in me. This is the reason why, this is how you get rid of self-doubt. Realizing that that dream on the inside, the one that gave me the dream is supporting me. See what the Bible says here. He says it's God that works in you, but to will. He says will, the, the Greek word means that desire, it's God at work in you. For example, if you begin to have a desire to get married, don't doubt it. It's God at work in you, but to will. Glory to God. I say glory to God. It's God at work in you, but to will. Wow. It's God at work in me to will. It says it's God at work in me but to will and to do of his good pleasure. You know what? This is how you overcome self-doubt. When you have that inspiration, trust God that put it inside you to push it, to finish it. Trust God that put that dream I am persuaded that every dream that God put inside me, he has equipped me for it. Oh my God. I am persuaded that every dream that God put inside of me, he has equipped me for it. Someone says, how do you have gotten married? Because I have a desire to marry. If God gave me a desire to marry, then God has a man for me to marry. God has a woman for me to marry. If God put desire for me to migrate, then God has migration approval for me. If God put desire for me to expand my business, then God has funding for me. If God put desire for me to buy a property, then God has a way for me because it is him that works in me but to will praise God if you believe that say amen, amen. say God is at work in me but to will and to do of his good pleasure the second thing you want to do to overcome so that is this 
let yourself that motivate you, not depress you. Let me give you a story. 1993, 92, 93. That will be the first time I was going to preach to about 200 or 300 people. 93 will be 20 years ago, no? 30 years ago, yeah. That will be the first time I'll preach to about, you know, 300 people. I was in school. Meanwhile, the guys that normally preach to them, we had like a student retreat, you know, and I was going to preach to them. And, but they were this professional. When I say professional, they were students also, but they were good. Those guys were good. They now felt that I should preach that day. My God. I felt, how can I preach beside all those people? But instead of me to run away, my self-doubt drove me to prayer. I remember I fasted for three days. I'm telling you, the day I was meant to preach, I could not go to school. I stayed, I stayed back and I prayed for literally five to six hours. I was just praying. I was just praying. I, see, I allowed my self-doubt to motivate me. I didn't allow it to depress me. Let your self-doubt motivate you to get some training. Let your self-doubt motivate you to put in some extra work. Praise God. Praise God. So let yourself that motivates you. Let yourself that push you to do an ex some extra work. Some of you, yourself that is that maybe because I'm too big, I'll not get married. Let yourself that push you to lose weight. Use your self doubt as motivation. Use yourself that's what has motivation. How many times do I say use yourself that as motivation? Glory to God. First Samuel chapter 17. This is the last scripture and we're going to close. Someone say, are you getting blessed today? Yes, use yourself. That, so, if you're afraid that you can't start a business, use yourself that to go and get a mentor. Like, let him motivate you and say, oh, the reason why is this. You know what I'm saying? The more you have self-doubt. How do you curse self-doubt? The more you have results, the more your self-doubt diminishes. Let me give an example. Um, yes, you want, you want to tell me something? All right. Good news. Amen. Okay, there's someone that is online that wants to share. You know, you know we have people that are joining on Zoom right now. Okay, you want to share? Do you have it? Can you pass it through? How about that? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead and share. Okay, I'm going to go until they're able to figure that out again. Praise the Lord. So let yourself that motivate you. First Samuel chapter 17. First Samuel chapter 17. Verse 23. This is a very powerful. All of you that have self-doubt, David's story should motivate you. David's story should motivate you. The Bible says, when David came to battle, as he talked with them, there came the, the champion. The Philistine of Glad, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake unto the same word, and David heard it. And when the men of Israel, when they saw the man, they fled from him and were so afraid. Question, why? You know, I've said this before, but let me say it again. I used to wonder why nobody could stand up against Goliath until I found in the Bible. Remember that the Bible says that Goliath will come 40 days, and he will abuse them morning and what? Evening. You know what? Has he spoke negative words to them in the morning and in the evening? He was killing their faith. If you want to break self-doubt, excuse yourself from persons and environment that destroys your self-confidence. And if you want to be honest, a lot of us that deal with self-doubt, we got it from somewhere. I remember that I remember that teacher that will say. You know, in my secondary school, you want to study uh, science. Do you think you're a science material? He had, that was the way he used to talk. He said, you want to study uh, science. Do you think you're a science material? 
your brain cannot carry uh, physics. He said, you better go to where your mates are, eh? in the commercial class. That's where they are. And, you know, and if you notice, when I was in secondary school, the art and commercial students turned out to be the worst people because the narrative was that they were not good in school. But, you know, when, in real life, guess the people are doing better. It's those acts and what? It's those students. Sometimes, what you need to push is a self-doubt. Like, you should say, if they don't believe in me, challenge yourself to go the extra mile to prove something. Listen to me. All those that didn't believe in me, thank you for not believing in me. You got me to where I am today. Because the fact that you didn't believe in me was enough challenge for me to go forward. What is what I'm talking about? That's why you have a lot of grace to grace stories and you have few grace to grace stories. What's grace to grace story? I came from a great background and it has gotten better. The reason why is that they came from a supporting background. The people that have great stories that all odds were against us. But we fought our way through because we learned it was all the hurt against us that turned us to fight us. Somebody say hallelujah. Sometimes you have to thank the people that give you problems problem. Because with their problems you will not grow. Sometimes you have to thank the people that disappointed you. Because without their disappointment you will have not known God. You will have not experienced a miracle. You will have not grown. Glory to God. I say glory to God. The Bible says, see what the Bible says. And when the men of Israel saw him in verse 24, they fled from him for they were afraid. You know, and David began to ask questions. David began to ask questions. Question. Nobody told David to fight Goliath. Why did David pick up Goliath? Because it was God at work in me, both to will and to do. As soon as Goliath spoke, David said, this is why I came. How did he know? Because there was an inspiration inside him that said, I'm meant to destroy you. Some of you, can I be honest with you? Not all pains are bad. Some pain just shows you are in transition. I, I don't know what, I, I don't know if I'm talking to you. Not all pains are bad. Some pains are signs that what? You are in transition. Don't kill the pain. Let the pain walk you to destiny. Not all pains are bad. Some pains just shows you are in transition. You had to go through the breakup for a makeup. That's the truth. If you didn't lose the money, you have not gained wisdom. Not all refusals are bad. Some refusals are redirection. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Look at verse 28 of the same chapter. And as David was talking up and down with other people, Eliab, his elder's brother, heard him speak and said unto the men, Eliab's anger, anger was keen against David and said, Why have you come hither? To whom have you led the few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride. I know the nothingness of your heart. For that, And this was, all this was effort to put self-doubt in David. He says, For you have come to the battle. What did David say? David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? See how David responded to problems. Listen to me. Once you have a big problem, say, this shows my size. Because the Bible says, God will not allow you to be tempted above that which you are able to what? To bear. So if you have a big problem, that shows what? That shows your size. So the problem is the revelation of what your size is. Something happens, you need 50 million. That shows 50 million is your size. Because some people can never need 50 million. Something happens, you need 10 million. I say, Father, thank you that I can even need 10 million. You don't, know, you don't understand. Some people, the whole father, mother, and children cannot need 10 million together. Because the problem shows your capacity. The problem is that you're looking at what the problem says, but you're not looking at what the problem points to. That the problem points to what? Your capacity. I mean, we're here, 
we have some projects going on. And I'm like, Lord, this is overwhelming. And God says, what's overwhelming? That's your capacity. That's what you can do. If you cannot do it, it can never come to you. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. So let's close now. How do you overcome self that number one? By responding, by responding, by responding to your inner man. What, so it's God that works in me but to will. So it, it's, it's a step of faith. It's God that works in me but to will. You must, that inspiration. I want to ask you, let me, let me, let me ask you. Have many of you, let me, let, you know today what this morning we'll touch on finances. I think we spoke about stewardship. Has anybody here, as you were praying, worship, church, by personal, and a voice said, give this amount. And it was outrageous to you. Raise up your hands. Has it happened to you before? Just once. Just wave your hands. Haven't you? Just wave your hands. You know what just happened? It's that scripture. It's God that walks in you. Both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It can only come to you because it's your size. There are two things. You can either kill that inspiration. Or you can nurse the inspiration. You can either kill the inspiration or you can what? Nurse the inspiration. The biggest steps I've taken in my life may not even be God said. I just had an inspiration to do this. And the moment I tried to do it, I saw the whole power of God come behind me and made it happen. Many of you are in places where you have to leave relationships, you have to enter or things you have to step out and you're really afraid. Remember, it's God that walks in you, but to will and to do of his good pleasure. Some of you have, some of you are meant to work in ministry. And you've forgotten that it's God that walks in you, but to will and to do of his good pleasure. And the thing is this, until you take one step, you will never see the glory of God. The second thing you have to do, challenge your doubt. Challenge your doubt. Then the third thing is this, cut off the fear source. Cut off, refuse popular and background narrative. Cut off the fear and self-doubt source. Then take a step of faith. Take a step of faith. That area you're doubting yourself, what will a step of faith look like today? So for example, I've worked with my assistants and we're putting deadlines to when my books will come out. You know why? Because I can keep talking about my books till next tomorrow. But I'm going to take a step of faith by putting money to it and showing, I say, this is, you know what I'm talking, even me talking to you is a step of faith because I want to be able to hold me responsible by December 31st and say, Pastor, you said your books are coming out. Where are they? Get people that can hold you responsible. Oh, I, I want to buy a car. Get people that can hold you responsible. That this is what I want to do. The last one is this. This is very powerful. <laughs> oh, wow. Verse 33. Verse 32. First Samuel 17. So they told Saul that they wanted to fight Goliath. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of me. That's what you want to do. Listen to me. Stop the negative talk. Start the positive talk. If you want to change self-doubt, change what you say. Not just what to say outside, what you say inside. What do you tell yourself inside? He said, let no man's heart fail because of me. He said, thy servant will go and fight the Philistine. Then see what he said. This is how, oh my, someone say Hallelujah. This is how you build self-doubt. And, so, and Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against the Philistines to fight him. For you are but a child. But he was a man of war from his child. What did David say? And David said, Sir, just let me explain what it is to you. This is how you overcome self-doubt. You overcome self-doubt by remembering past victories. Past, you overcome self-doubt by remembering Rehearsing past victories. God, you helped me. When I started business in 1998, you gave me the first breakthrough. 2005, I needed 50,000 naira for a deal. You gave it to me. 2010, you did this for me. You gave it to me. The Lord that did it before and did it again, he will do it again. You must learn to rehearse past victory. Let me tell you something. Can I, can everywhere? This is the secret of self-doubt. When self-doubt wants to hold you, 
it will make you rehearse past failure. He said, remember, remember, that's how you lost that one. Remember, that's how you lost that one. Remember, that that's how you lost that one. And the more you listen to that, you become weaker and weaker and weaker. But what did David do? David was remembering past victory. I did well. What, what did David say? Look at what it says. Go, go, go to verse 35. It says, there came a lion, there came a bear, they took a, a, a lion. It says, and I went up time and delivered it out of the mount of, of, of out of his mouth. And he arose against him, and I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. The next verse, verse 36. Verse 36. It says, the servant slew the lion, and what? The beard. And this uncircumcised Philistine. Did you see? He was establishing a pattern of victory. He said, I slew the lion. He said, I slew the beer. He says, the uncircumcised Philistine. You know what he was saying? The land I am bare I slew, it was not by power. So it was not by might. The same grace that was at work in, in, in what? In doing the lion, in doing the beard. This uncircumcised Philistine. You know what that looks like? You know what that looks like? When you have a great project in front of you, like that lady said, I got a new role. You say, Lord, you will just say, Lord, when I was going to become a cell leader, I didn't think I could do it. But you gave me an outstanding cell. Now I'm even a zonal leader. Lord, thank you for that. And Lord, if you could make me a success, what about being a manager at work? The same grace that was at work then is at work now. Are you here, somebody? That's how you deal with self, self doubt. You don't say, oh, will I feel again? No, 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 no. What do you do? Rehearse your success verbally. Rehearse it with your mouth. Visualize your success with your eyes. David was so vivid. He told Goliath, say, I will cut off your head. He didn't have a sword. He told him. He described it. It was a move in his head. He had the picture clear out. I remember, many of you don't know this, but there was a time this fourth service used to have like 150 people. I don't know who remembers. And I said, and I said, I said to the leaders, I said, this first service is going to be packed to overflow. And some people, like Pastor Femi George, then, not now, now he's full of faith. <laughs> he said, this is our pastor. He's a dreamer. But look at the service right now. Packed to people. <laughs> Pastor Femi George, used to have do self that until one day he said that you know what you know how he overcame he said there's no point doubting again everything he said was impossible it's not possible what's the point so I, he told me i've moved from self that i'm now full of faith but that's what i wanted to move to where you can look at the future with a lot of faith i remember i remember can, now i will tell you some story i remember and um, not last year upper year we're going to end of the year service we would put all the space everywhere that will rent a coliseum to put overflow here. Then Pastor John said, he said, um, there's collision overflow. Pastor said, for who? Are we holding the service? They said, no, no, it's the overflow. I said, but we have all this space. We have outside. We have this. They said, he said, he said, who will sit down there? He said, Pastor, what you said there will be overflow? Then Pastor John said, if Pastor said so, then he must have seen it. He said, I don't see it, but I hang with his faith that there will be an overflow. Then they said some leaders here, and when they said them here, they grumbled and said, only four or five of us will be here to the end. Oh, you were there? You were amongst them? They said, we know that only five of us will be here to the end of the service. Then one of them said, I looked back and we're 100. I looked back and we're 200. Then I looked back, the whole world was free. The question is this. This is a question. If I didn't take that step to use this at overflow, what would have happened? You will never know what you can do except you try. That's what I'm saying. You will never know who can give you the money except you ask. You could never know if you can get the contract except you try. You will never know if you say yes except you ask. July the 1st, we're in Wembley. What, the, should I tell you something? We're expecting 14,000 people. You don't understand. Even churches in the UK that are strong do not gather. 14,000 people. Then someone from Africa is coming 
for 14,000 people. But guess what? We will come back and come and tell you that there was an overflow outside. Why? It's grace. It's grace. It's grace. This is our story. You know what I tell myself? This is what I tell myself. Father, when we went to Dubai, Dubai was the first place we did NLP conference as in Nigeria. We thought we would be 100, but we're 200, two, two or 300. In a small, in fact, it was terrible because we thought people would come in for December, but that's when they slammed that ban on Nigeria and people could not get in. And the hall was jammed and people were standing. Then we went to Ibadan, we rented this hall, we were hoping that we'll get. We went to this hall that was 2,500, and we got several thousands. And every time I'm, I'm praying about Wembley, I said, Lord, I talk like David. Father, thank you for what you did two years ago in Ibada. You filled it up. Thank you for what you did two years ago in Dubai. You filled it up. Thank you for what you did in Houston. You filled it up. As I'm saying it, I'm dissolving myself down and I'm building my confidence in God. I say thank you for what you did in the battle. Just two Fridays, three Fridays ago, you did the impossible. Thank you for July 1st will just be like what you have been doing before. You will do it again and again and again and again and again. Somebody say amen. How do you dissolve yourself down? By rehearsing what the Lord has done. How many of you know what I'm talking about? That's how you do it. Praise God. What has a, a self-doubt you're trying to resolve? You came here because it's really bad. Really, 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 really bad. You came here because of that. Yes, ma'am. I want to give, yeah, give her a microphone. There's one online. Abba. Okay, hold on, man. Let me take Abba. Abba, are you ready? Go ahead and speak. Good afternoon, Pastor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. I can hear you again, Abba. Right. Okay, I can hear you now. Okay. I've been in self that for you no know, more. I know. Oh, glory! Look at the brighter side of life. Don't let power, no power they stop you. Always look at the brighter side of life. Okay, I have a back to you. A, what, what's your name? Where you where, where you joining the service from? From where? What? What? From Benue State. Okay, great. It's nice to meet you, Abba. So, I've been in self almost 10 years. I know I have became concerned event. I twice had this year. Okay, Abba, I, I will tell you. Abba, hold on. You know, can I speak to this camera so that you know, um, Abba? I cannot hear you at all. I can't hear you at all. The 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 network is going off and on, so we'll try to fix it. And if not, we'll come back. Or if not, we'll find a way to connect with you again. You know, because the network is oscillating up and down. I'm sorry, Abba, but we'll try to fix it right now. You can also type, and we can send it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. First of all, I'll appreciate, uh, I want to thank God for coming to worship here. It's my first time invited by my daughters. And they, today is my 55th birthday. So they brought me. But I didn't actually come for that faith issue. But I am going home today. Why? Because my husband has been in this project for 10 good years. He's been struggling they are in the, to the land something business, but each time he comes home, I'll tell him what, what we have been waiting for since. We have suffered a lot to train these children, and uh, you know, and it's not forthcoming. When will it come? But a few months back, he came back again and said, it's like this project is about to happen. And I'm like, please, 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 don't even bring it again. Because 
I, I, each time I, I believe in it, it, it's like it's not forthcoming. But today, I told him now, I said, this project, we are receiving it today. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. So this is what I would say to you, my man said. Number one, I want to pray for you. But the second thing I want to say is that I want, I didn't want, it to, I want it to believe in it. And so while you're working on that project, then look for other projects also. I believe it will come. I believe it has come. But while you're working on that, keep looking for what other point. Why that well is open, look for other wells and also open. So that by the time that is going on, there will be other things that's also happening. Father, we'll receive for them a miracle. We'll receive for them a miracle. Let the doors be open. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Let the King of glory come in. We said, in the name of Jesus Christ, let gates be lifted in your favor. Let the hearts of the people be touched in your favor. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I think I should give my head to her. What do you think? Yes, go ahead. Go ahead and give the head to her. Happy 55th happy birthday. Happy birthday. Come, come. Bring it. Let, let her come. Let her come and receive it on the stage. Come over here, man. Can you give me the hair? Yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday, man. Happy birthday, man. You want to say something? Yes, that's a microphone. I'm just excited. You know, I've suffered a lot on my children. You know, but today I'm seeing them. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Your anointing will not dry up in the Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, ma'am. The Lord will increase you in every area. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody. God bless you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's always amazing how thought service just has a way of getting emotional all the time. It has a way of just getting emotional all the time. Wow. Praise God. We must always be love. We must always show love and kindness. Amen. Is there someone still in myself that just one more person? I want someone that has a very serious extremely everybody has issues but you know it's extremely from Saudi Arabia <laughs> from Saudi Arabia <laughs> okay okay from Saudi Arabia <laughs> can you mute her I can't hear I can't I'm hear so her. I'm so grateful Alistair has changed my life. I'm grateful. Thank you. <laughs> All I heard is Harvestas has changed my life. <laughs> okay, let me send it back to her. I don't know your name. Miss from Saudi Arabia. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. You know why this is powerful? A lot of you, when you invite your friends, you don't know. Look at that. In Saudi Arabia, she's blessed just as you are blessed here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay, I will take one more. Can I take this lady over here? I, I will want to take you, but if she, if we can finish with this, all right, and we'll just close. Amen. So, I'm a single parent. Okay. And I've always had this self-doubt that, oh, you're a single parent, you have a son, no young guy wants to get married to a, a, a single parent. Oh, you're not enough, you have a child, you have a baggage. And yes, most guys that I've met, they always like, oh, uh, when I tell them, oh, I have a son. Because when, when you are meeting me, they're asking me my name. I just have to tell you, I have a son. Okay. So if you are not ready, please, 
don't waste my time. So, and at the end of the day, they are always not ready to engage themselves. So you have this self-doubt that what's that you will not so marry. So I'm always like, okay, even when you come and say hello, I'm like, I'm in a relationship. I'm not in a relationship. But because whenever I tell them, they always leave. I'm like, okay, there's no need telling them. Let me okay, just good. be uh, in uh, my Hold own on, uh, you'll speak, but I want to start noticing what you say. Whenever I tell them, they always leave. How many of you have you told and how many of you have left? 25, uh, 10, 15, okay. 12. <laughs> so, how many? Not up to 25. Up to 12. Let's say 7. Yeah. I told you, they're never up to 12. And then the ones that want to stay, there's another issue because I'm... No, 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 I'm holding on. When you say they always leave, they don't always leave. Because you have now said the ones that want to stay. <laughs> but why are you putting your attention on those that always leave? Let me tell you something. I understand you have a child, and that brings some challenges to someone that doesn't want a child. But the truth is also, it has some advantage. Yes. Because you're an experienced mom now. Mm -hmm. five, my son will be five in October. Will be five what? In October. Five years in October. The question is that, I don't even think it's the people, I think it's you. The reason why I'm saying so is that, remember the story of, Caleb and the other elders, they saw the same thing. They saw the same thing. And Caleb said, we are well able. And they said, we are not able. They said, we saw ourselves as grasshoppers. Bible says, and so were we in their sight. Let me ask you a honest question. Bible says, and so were we in their sight. Do you feel you are disadvantaged because of your son? Sincerely. No, no, I don't. no, no, relax, relax, relax. The way you sound. I'm not saying you don't love your son. But you feel as if I'm in minus. Compared to single ladies without children. Yeah, sometimes I feel if my son, if I didn't have my son, maybe I wouldn't be here right now. Maybe I would have like. Can you hold the microphone? Because I can maybe hear. I would have had like a different life. But sometimes I still say, oh, thank God I have a son. Because my son actually sees saved me from a lot of things. There are things that I ask or there are things I desire and somebody just comes, oh, oh, you have a son. Yeah, take, even without me asking. Your, your son brings you favor. Yes, he does. Wow. He does. The thing is that, let me tell you what I see now. I understand completely. So some part of you, your son is a blessing. Some part of you, your son is a minus. Some days, yes. Some days. The question is that the more you see that way, the more you'll be stuck. Let me ask you a question. Did God know you will have a child outside wedlock? What? Did God know you'll be a single mom? Did God know you'll be a single mom? Maybe not a child outside wedlock. I don't know if you had a child. Did God know? I'm sure he does. He does? Yeah. Did he plan for that? Yes, like, yes he did. Because no, no, do you think he planned for it or you're not sure he planned for it? I don't know, to be honest. Okay, okay, that's but fine. With the things do, I'm seeing, do you, do you the have way, a car? No, I don't. Okay. Do you have a wristwatch? <laughs> no, I don't. Do you have a phone? Yes, I do. Do you have a phone? What phone do you use? Let me see your phone. Okay. What, what make is your phone? An iPhone. 7. It's an iPhone? Yeah. If you break the camera of that iPhone, can it be fixed? Yes, it can. They will have to put another camera there. Yes. So that iPhone knew that so, someone that has your phone can break their phone. So they prepared a spare part for it. Yes. it. Is iPhone as smart as God? So, God that could see the future knows that you will have a child outside wedlock and does not prepare a man that will accept you and your child. Give me a moment. <laughs> Do you think God planned for you despite where you are right now? Yes, he does. He always has my back. Not just always has your back. If an iPhone owner that cannot see tomorrow can plan for accidents 
Because, but God that knows everything. You know what it says in Jeremiah chapter 29? It says, I know the plans I have for you. Is it plan only for single ladies or single mama included? Yeah, we're all included. What's your name? Wamaka. Wamaka, are you in this plan? Yes, I am. Are you in I, I, can, I don't know if you are there. Are you sure you're in God's plan? Yes, I am. You are? I'm number one on the list. The reason why I'm saying so to you, if you know you're in God's plan, all you have to do is to say, Lord, I receive it. Lord, I receive it. Your hand, the other hand without the microphone. Close your eyes one minute. Thank him for your son. Thank you for the favors you have received because of your son. Hold on. Hold on. Thank him for the plan of a great man that will accept you and your son. Okay, can you see that man? I wanted to see that man. Stand. I wanted to stand on your feet. Just you. Just stand. Stand. Hold on. Don't pray now. I wanted to see that man. In your mind, you can close your eyes. That helps you. See that man that will go on his knees and say, will you marry me? I accept you. I accept your son. Do you see that man? Close your eyes. Use the microphone. Tell me what you see. Is it fair or dark? Is it fair or dark? Is the exact type I'm asking God for? What is that type? What's that type? I want to know if you're seeing it. You need to tell me what you see. Because you need to see it. How tall is he? I just hope after saying it, other sisters won't want to have kids. <laughs> so God can give them this type. What is it? <laughs> so, hold on. I'm not done yet. Because you have to see him. I have just one minute. Close your eyes. This guy... Is it fair in complexion or is it dark? It's dark with caramel toppings. <laughs> what does he do for a living? Stay, stay, just close your eyes. Don't bother. Just, what does he do for a living? Is he, is he a businessman or he works in an office? He's a businessman. He's a businessman. Mm -hmm. Where does he stay? Hmm. Does he stay on the mainland or the island? He do <laughs> I don't know. I see him in a private jet, so. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Why are you laughing all of a sudden? What is he wearing? Is he wearing native? He's wearing t-shirt. What's he wearing right now? <laughs> Tell me what you see. Yeah. He's wearing a white native. White native. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You know the reason why? Why are you laughing right now? You were crying some minutes ago. Why are you laughing? Because I see a seat re reserved beside him. No, what? Where I'm going to sit. You see what? A seat beside him in his private jet where I'm going to be sitting in. Great. And my son too. You know why you're laughing? I'll tell you why. Ever listen to this because this can help everyone. All of you online, this can help you. The reason why she was crying before was this was her thought. Nobody wants me. So in her mind, all the great guys are running away from me. So I helped that be like David. Everybody saw the height of David. David said, I killed the bear. I killed the lion. I killed the tiger. So what did I help her see? I helped her see another picture of her getting married. And that produced you joy. Every time you want to feel sad, go back to this picture. 
Remember what you saw, and that will produce you joy. Thank you so much. Thank you. How do you feel right now? Great. Tell, tell me, tell me how you feel. You know, when you were asking about Hold the microphone when closer. you were asking about um, people with first um, self doubt, I wanted to talk about it, but I decided to wait because I want to talk at the end where you are saying that, oh, if. God has helped you come out of self-doubt. I don't want to talk in the category of people who still have the self-doubt. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Praise you. God. Stand on your feet. Let's pray. Stand on your feet. Let's pray. Let's give the Lord a big shout. Put your hands on someone's shoulder and pray for them. Put your hands on someone's shoulder and pray for them. Put your hands on someone's shoulder and pray. Pray for them. Pray. Pray for them. Pray for them. Pray that every root of self that will be uprooted. Menento saprekita. Vreni man krasto krane mantele kush ine manan kote zrianto kamante. Zazamra kuma nimbra dolo braskida. Emene kroste le broke ma po kayo. In Jesus' name we're praying. And Lord, I'm praying that you heal everyone that is struggling with self-doubt. And let the root of self-doubt be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Let their confidence in your ability and in them be built up. Let them begin to do things they couldn't do before. And have results they couldn't have before. Let them have the freedom to love. Let them have the freedom to do big things. And make the name of Jesus famous. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You'll be pleased to have your seats. Glory to God.